Welcome back to Mock the Mock, where we take a look at someone else's mock draft. And I'm Maki, giving you my views, thoughts, and opinions. And right after the running backs finished up at the Combine, I hopped onto YouTube and saw that the franchise guy already put out a post-Combine mock draft. Mark is on his stuff, man. He's on his stuff. Full disclosure, I went ahead and watched this video before recording that because I want to give you his perspective. I don't want to just take shots in the dark on why he made these picks. But uh, what's cracking lacking? It's your boy, Bro Schmo. Just in case you did not know, so go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content. As always, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let's have that nice, beautiful football discourse. Now, with the Chicago Bears, we're talking trade. We're talking trade, and that's what Marcus does here. However, now with the whole situation going on with Jalen Carter, it seems like Will Anderson is the only like best non quarterback prospect on the board that you feel good about with the things going on with Jalen Carter and whatnot. Maybe you're pro you're likely gonna feel less confident with that. The problem with this is like now no longer is it really an option to trade back to the Colts if you really want Will Anderson because bet your sweet cheeks that the Cardinals will likely take Will Anderson there at that pick. Now, now you look to Houston, which you'd be like, okay, why is Houston? Why would Houston only trade up one pick? They uh, they know the Bears ain't taking a quarterback. Well, whoever the Bears trade with will likely take a quarterback. Why risk it being the quarterback you have your eye on? So go ahead, move up that one spot, and secure the guy you want. And that's exactly what we see here. And it works out for the Bears because now they move to two and they'll be able to get Will Anderson. So right here with the Houston Texans, they go ahead, secure Bryce Young, as we'll see in a second. Only cost them a second. The Bears will probably value that second round pick because they gave away their early second round pick for Chase Claypool. Ugh. However, uh, Texans here, they go ahead and get their guy. Bryce Young came in a combine. He weighed over 204 pounds. I don't know people would be like, well, he ain't going to be playing at that. You know what? I don't care. I've been saying this through the whole process, at least for me. He's my top quarterback. I don't think anyone really touches him Touches him in terms of a thrower. No one processes the field as quick as he does. I'm willing to bet that he can be an exception to this whole oh, quarterbacks under 200 pounds rule or 5'10 quarterbacks type of standard that typically we follow when it comes to um, looking at these guys. So, they go ahead, they grab uh, Bryce Young, which means Will Anderson is going here to the Chicago Bears. Remember, you don't move back further than the Cardinals because Will Anderson likely off the board. And then you're going to have to really think about, okay, do we take Jalen Carter given this situation? If you don't know what's going on with Jalen Carter, go ahead, do your own research. I've already talked about it, I think, twice uh in video so yeah if, if you want more i did i talked about it in depth during the mel kuyper uh mock the mock uh, and i talked a little bit about it uh, on my first combine video where the d-line uh ran so you can check that out so bears they go ahead grab their guy here in will anderson that's fine now the cardinals they're in an interesting situation where it's like, well, shoot, do we roll the dice with Jalen Carter? Do we feel like we can maybe rein in the lead foot of Jalen Carter? Maybe you don't feel that confident you can do that. Well, this is also a very good trade-in spot for a team that really wants a quarterback. Anthony Richardson went ahead, showed you, hey, my physical tools, they are great. We already knew that, but it's nice that it con was confirmed by the Combine. CJ Stroud looked really good in passing drills at the Combine. Uh, Will Levis, he showed off his arm, which is great, which is great. So they're going to be thinking about, so teams are going to want to move up, especially if you're a team like the Panthers who actually make the trade here as they, they were, they've been pretty open about like, we would love to start with a fresh young quarterback. So they're going to move up here and take CJ Stroud. Uh, they trade away. They basically swap first with the Cardinals. They trade away a first next season, a second next season, and a fourth next season on top of their third this year. 
uh, to move up to get CJ Stroud. He's my quarterback too. I think it's fine. I think this is a great way to start uh, your franchise if you are the uh, Panthers as your team already with a ton, ton of talent there. So I like it. All right. Next, we have the Indianapolis Colts. They're going to sit here. They're going to take Will Levis. Will Levis, man. Uh, people will talk about the whole Will Levis versus Anthony Richardson debate, and it always comes down because people will be like, oh, Anthony Richardson's tools are way better. But it's like when you look at learning curve in terms of being a passer, Will Levis is just a bit closer in that regard. Like ball placement, it's not great all the time. The decision-making... Uh, I, I thought I thought was was probably average for Will Levis. Like it wasn't great, but there were times where it wasn't bad. Uh, people will be like, "Well, you show me one game where Will Levis really showed that he could be a top quarter back in the NFL draft." And it's like, okay, go look at the 2021 tape. Go back in 2022, like that second half against Ole Miss looked really good. You'd be like, "Oh, the one where he fumbled the game away, yeah, where he got hit blindside." where his offensive line let him down. He got hit in like less than like two seconds. Okay, cool. That's the hill you want to die on. Be like, oh, this is why he was crap that game. It's like, okay, whatever. Like he he was leading that Kentucky team back to victory. Just unfortunately it didn't happen. But I think he's put more together as a passer, obviously with Anthony Richardson. First time as a full-time starter there this past season. Uh, the learning curve is going to be a bit more steep, as we know. Will Levis, he he actually he's worked in a NFL offense with a lot more translatable concepts to the NFL, as his former OCs was former uh, Rams OC and a former quarterbacks coach for the Niners. So, Will Levis, if, uh, depending on where your franchise is, do you feel like you have the luxury to have a rebuild? Maybe if you're on the hot seat, though, it's a little bit different for the Colts here. Uh, I think you might consider Anthony Richardson because, well, new head coach. I think I might take Anthony Richardson actually here for the Colts instead. You got a new head coach. Uh, You could go ahead. You could release a few of the big contracts you have. And you could work work within the draft. Uh, Hit free agency hard next year. By that time, Anthony Richardson probably ready to go. And yeah, you're looking at like a potential two-year rebuild, essentially. Hopefully, if everything goes well, Anthony Richardson. So I think it'd go either or here, honestly. Like if you got a preference between like Will Levis, Anthony Richardson, for me, it's a bit situational for uh, the teams, for the franchises, that is. All right, so the Seattle Seahawks. Where's it at? Where's it at? This is why I don't like doing videos for Mock the Mox, because I am constantly having to search where the picks are there we go it's jalen carter look he still falls inside the top five and i agree with this like i'm gonna be honest if i'm the bears i don't mind trading back to four because i'd still take jalen carter i'm not gonna let him fall we're talking right now in terms of legal ramifications he's facing two misdemeanors that resulted uh either a thousand dollar fine for each or community service uh it if you want to talk about, oh, he's going to like, there's not enough information out. There's many conflicting reports out right now. Like, I think if you're, you're just speaking out of ignorance at this point, let's, let's wait for all the information to come out before we make, we, we come out with our own opinion right now. I'll tell you what my opinion is. I feel fine drafting him in the top five. I do as of right now again, but that can change depending on what information comes out. So I would just say, hold your horses. And as it stands now, it's kind of a slap on the wrist for Jalen Carter. And again, his teammates, they've said he's a great locker room guy. We've, you could go look that on Twitter. Uh, Cause if you're going to talk about the Todd McShay reports, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. My opinion is Todd McShay was kind of full of crap with that. Uh, but however, with uh, maybe the potential speed in tickets he's had in the past. Again, I haven't looked into that as of just yet. I'm coming off combine weekend guys. Like I'm doing, I've been doing a lot. 
trying to keep track of stuff, putting together my nice little Excel spreadsheet. But uh, I'm going to look more into that uh, probably Monday. Yeah, I'm recording this Sunday, so I'm going to look more into that Monday uh, specifically because someone mentioned he's got a history of speeding tickets and it's like, does he? I don't, I don't know how you find that information, but I'll look it up. So I'd be, if I'm Seattle, I, I, I'd feel fine. And I mean, as Marcus brings up in the video, um, Seattle, they have that culture where it's like they will put these, bring in these guys that might have a bit of a checkered past and the, they get these guys to come in, work, focus on football and don't be problems for the most part outside of the locker room. So I like the pick here. Let's keep rolling. We got the... Uh, Detroit Lions. I know Lions fans are going to love this. They're probably not. They should. Anthony Richardson. I actually love this pick for uh, the Lions. Like, I think here, you, for me, it's either you go with whoever your top corner is. Go ahead. You're, you're going to get to take a swing on any of the quarters. It's your, your You get your pick of the gander in terms of this corner class. Or you're like, we got Jared Goff, and he's more of a bridge option than an actual long-term option let's go ahead and get anthony richardson who has all these crazy tools and let's try to develop him let's get that elite potential elite quarterback and i like that pick here for the lions so i'm not gonna disagree with it i i'm not gonna lie to you i'd probably would consider uh, considering anthony richardson at that colts pick we're kind of at that point right now um Again, kind of depends where your franchise is. Do you have bridge? Do you have time? Stuff like that. So it kind of sucks for the Raiders because uh, they do not get a shot at any quarterback, uh, which is where Marcus does something kind of cool. And we'll get to in a sec. Uh, you know what? I'll just talk about it. As he has the Packers moving up, trading Aaron Rodgers for this pick. I know there's been reports out, oh, Aaron Rodgers, if he gets traded, it's not going to go for this much because just the, the market out there isn't right now big for him. But, I mean, I think a team, if they could get a Super Bowl window, take a shot on a guy who is a year removed from being the MVP of the NFL, uh, you might be more, more willing to take that shot, especially if you're the Raiders, who have kind of already mortgaged parts of your future on being able to win recently again that chandler jones move that was a move you were making when you thought you were competing the Devonte adams move where you threw away your first two picks in the 2022 draft that's a move you made because you were like we're gonna be competing and then crap hit the fan so i don't know I'm, i might be trying to take shots to I don't know. I don't think I would be taking personally. I'd be taking shots to try to compete if I'm the Raiders, because <laughs> like I don't know. Aaron Rodgers, like I feel like that Super Bowl window is real small, especially with how like how his play was last year. Which for the most part, it was still fairly solid. He was still probably like a top twelve to top fourteen quarterback in the league. But yeah, I don't know. But uh, oh, I will say this aaron jones during the running back combine did say like if he had to bet money on it he thinks aaron might be retiring this year so i don't know why you just come out and say that he ought to be fair the first statement out of his mouth was i honestly have no idea so could be a shot in the dark like a darkness retreat <laughs> anywho uh tyree wilson's a pick here for the packers they're also going to get pick 15 so that's nice. They go Tyree Wilson. Uh, Rashawn Gary will be a free agent. Uh, Preston Smith probably not more of a long, not really a long term option. Uh, Tyree Wilson could fill in that Dean Lowry role uh, immediately. A guy that could be just a versatile piece along your offensive line. That's immediately a very good run stuffer. So I like that pick for the Packers. All right, we're gonna move on to. Devon Witherspoon going to the Atlanta Falcons. They get a corner here. They get the first pick of corner in the class. Uh, I know Marcus isn't that high on Miles Murphy. I kind of am. I mean, I'm a mark for, I'll, I'll just say this. I'm a mark for Miles Murphy. So, like, he, he's a guy I'm willing to, like, put my hand through the table for. Like, 
I really believe in the potential talent that is there. He he, he was a um, he, he was a guy I was high on coming into the season because the 2021 tape was really that good. In 2022, it was a bit of oh a bit of a letdown. But uh, if they, they could go corner here too, I think they got very good sub package options there and uh, Darren Hall and D. Alford. But they need a legit number two moving forward, as I know they have Casey Hayward there, but uh, he's not a long-term option. So I, I like this pick as well, especially if you're not sold on Miles Murphy. I get it. I understand. Uh, Pierce Skaronsky going to the Cardinals is interesting to me. And at first, when I saw the pick, I was like, ooh. ooh. I mean, you trade down, but this is going to be your first pick. like, And... The first thing Mark, I think Marcus said was like, I like the idea of getting Kyler Murray, smaller, like shorter offensive lineman. And I was like, ah, I was like, that's why you go over, like go with him over, like, I guess a Paris Johnson or a, uh, a, uh, uh, Brodger Jones, probably one of the other guys that kind of like gets talked about uh, in that tier. But uh, also, listen to him here as offensive lineman. If you want to run with uh, DJ Humphreys, Josh Jones is your two tackles. Skronsky immediately like could fill any of the five spots on the offensive line. I have no doubt about that. So he's a bit more versatile of a pick as well. If you want to like, if you're trying to build this for Kyler Murray, opposed to maybe addressing your defense, which is something I feel a bit better about. I know just because they got. Gannon as their head coach doesn't mean that they that this will be a defense first draft for them but I do think their defense is pretty dog water but I mean that's why you make this trade you pick up extra picks because you got a lot of you're deprived like your, your team's deprived of a lot of talent especially young talent so you you kind of need to start taking swings and then we have the Oh, it's Christian Gonzalez to the Eagles. This one's easy, like really, like corners a need for the Eagles. Christian Gonzalez tested out great. Uh, it won't surprise me if he ends up being the first corner off the board. Uh, I think it go really either way. You could even throw Joey Porter up in there as well. Uh, some people, as we'll find out here, uh, really, really like Deontay Banks. Uh, I'm more on him as a late first round. Uh, but again, I kind of have nitpicks that are kind of, I'm not going to lie to y'all. My nitpicks are kind of trash. I probably should get more behind them than I am is what it is. But Christian Gonzalez, I think is a phenomenal pick. He's a good fit to the scheme. Uh, James Bradbury's free agent. Darius Slay is old, uh, older, and, uh, they have really nothing behind him. So makes all the sense in the world. We're going to move on to... Tennessee Titans, which is also an easy pick. Everyone and their mom is projected. It's Paris Johnson, who, uh, ridiculous, 30. Oh, whoops. I went a little too far ahead. Well, it's Paris Johnson. He came in with 36-inch arms. That's kind of nutty, kind of ridiculous. And uh, tackle uh, with Terry Lawan now gone, officially cut by the squad. Uh, this is a team that their kind of identity is Derrick Henry, which if that's going to continue to be your identity, then you need to have a very good offensive line. Right now, the left side of that offensive line is pretty bad. So Paris Johnson makes all the sense of the world. Let's go ahead and jump to Lucas Van Ness, which is another one. A lot of people have kind of been mocking because uh, they, they do believe after Bryce Young, they, they'll try to build this defense. And it's just feels like D'Amico Ryans would build from the inside out, uh, especially after this team went like guys with like uh, guys like Derek uh, Steenley, uh, Jalen Pitry last season early. Now they address the defensive line. Lucas Van Ness had a solid combine, a guy that had uh, that just kind of fits uh, at least what we've seen in terms of uh, what they like in San Francisco when it comes to their pass rushers. Guy, guys that um, guys that are big that are strong they hit with a lot of speed i know people would be like oh he had like 18 reps on the bench he ain't that strong it's like he hits with explosiveness like he turns speed to power real real nice um so i won't i wouldn't say the bench press is a, necessarily a great indicator of play strength all the time uh but 
Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not too butthurt about it. So Alright, 13. This one was actually interesting and I love it. So with Aaron Rodgers going to the Raiders, there we go. Uh the Jets probably more likely to get like a Derek Carr or a Jimmy G. Marcus says as much in this video. So he's like, go ahead, get them more weapons. Like I would me personally, I'd consider Broderick Jones here, but I do love Quentin Johnson. I don't mind this. Corey Davis. Uh think he's a free agent even if he's not he's probably a cap casualty i think he's a cap casualty potential cap casualty he's still on the roster but i think he frees up like six to ten million if you cut him uh which perfect pair up garrett garrett wilson and elijah moore with a bigger bodied receiver like quinnon johnston who brings that speed element that Corey davis doesn't so i actually really like this Pick. I'm gonna go ahead and let Gojo uh, out real quick. He wants to be freed. All right, here we go. All right, we're at 14. That is the New England Patriots. They go Deontay uh, Banks. I, I kind of brought it up earlier that he's a guy that um, honestly a good majority of the draft community love. I get it. He's a great athlete. Uh, he's got press man skills. Uh, he, he's put out some pretty solid games this year. Uh, if for me, it's like, I think there's a lot of times where he's just not tuned in. He's not, um, like if he feels like he's out of play, then uh, you ain't going to see a lot of effort. Uh, I felt like he, uh, not didn't necessarily play the ball well. And, but I will say like he, he plays receivers exceptionally well when the ball is in the air, he takes cues from those receivers knows where to put his uh hands uh to contest the catch but uh because if you look at some of his interceptions they were like tip balls and such uh, and not like tipped at the line like tipped like downfield so like i don't know man i'm coming around to deontay banks uh i don't know i don't know if i could put him as a top 20 player though like for me uh like i said maybe i just need to get over some of the nitpicks and just be like hey this guy's a wonderful athlete just shut up and move on all right shut up and mock draft <laughs> all right we got uh marcus for the packers here going jackson smith and jigba makes all the sense in the world had a great three cone had a great uh shuttle like i mean like 99th percentile type of great uh we we like you i think you bring him here and immediately like he's randall cobb he or at least that he's gonna be filling that slot role and now you have a plethora of great receivers uh to figure out in short order if jordan love is it so i like this pick i think uh uh right now it, it's him and quentin johnston who's wide receiver one and it's not like, oh, I think Jackson Smith and Jigba could be an outside receiver, but I think he could be an elite slot guy. That's where I'm at. Like, this guy can create after the catch. He's just so such a smooth athlete. Uh, I'm kind of curious what the rest of his testing will look like, especially, um, and I think Marcus brought this up later when uh, he talks about him. Uh, it Probably at this pick, too, uh, about Jordan. At no, I think it was at the Chargers pick. With Jordan Addison, kind of with the lackluster testing, uh, he did say he was dealing with a back strain. Fortunately, I think sometime this week or next week uh, is USC's pro day. So hopefully we get to see him maybe run better. Because like at 173, I think is what where he uh, weighed at. A 449 ain't going to cut it. Just a. All right. At pick 16, this is something I have mentioned. I mentioned it in, I think, my cap casualty video for the NFC or my... No, I think it was the cap casualty video for the NFC uh, where I talked about... Uh, oh, no, no, it was team needs. My bad, team needs. Where I was like, Osiris Torrance is a legitimately... A consideration for this pick if you're not sold on the corners here i might still i kind of like joey porter uh here but osiris torrance like hey i think could also be in play here 
uh, I think he potentially could be a top 20 prospect. This is a team that, um, well, now with Benemy there, to be fair, they better be like what final two seasons they invest heavily in the offensive line. So, like, I don't know. We'll see. I think it's going to be interesting. All right. We got uh, the Steelers on the board. That's right. He uh, he goes Joey Porter Jr. This is he mentions this is a popular one. Everyone mocks kind of makes sense. He's a good fit for the system. Uh, he gets to play for his dad's former team. He for me he's I think corner three right now. Maybe corner one C. But uh, Bijan Robinson by the way going to the Lions. I know a lot of Lions fans kind of like this pick. But they don't probably like it in conjunction with Anthony Richardson being the first pick for the Lions. But I'm kind of cool with it. And then you could go defense the rest of the draft. You could address defense in free agency. Bring in some proven guys uh, that can start. And just go ahead and draft talent. Your draft, you just draft a quarterback who has some of the craziest tools we've seen ever. Uh, and you're taking one of the best running back prospects since Saquon Barkley. And I dare say he is a better prospect, uh, than Saquon Barkley. Uh, that's right. I'm there with B. John Robinson. That's where I'm at right now. I think he's a, not necessarily a better athlete, but in terms of what he brings to the table as a running back. And Rob, honestly, Bijan, he, he tested out very, very well. So, like, I'm kind of there that Bijan's the best, like, a better running back prospect than Saquon, but it's exceptionally close. So, I'm I'm kind of cool with it. Uh, James Williams is a free agent. Uh, I think they would love to bring a guy like that back, though. He's a great locker room guy. Uh, but DeAndre Swift is often hurt. So, all right. At 19, we have Cam Smith. Going to the Bucks, Jamil Dean, free agent. Sean Murphy Bunnett, free agent. Uh, Cam Smith, tested very well. I think he's back in this first round mix now, a part of this quarterback class. So it's good to see him here. Uh, duh, 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 duh. We got Nolan Smith going to uh, the Seahawks. So the Seahawks get Jalen Carter. They pair that up with Nolan Smith, who tested out like a freak. I get it. He's undersized. Sorry, I had to pick something up. I get it. He's undersized. You're going to kind of look at him from like a Hassan Haskins role. But like the dude, just his test numbers are ridiculous. We knew he was explosive. I didn't expect him to come out and at least run that good. Uh, the dude's a very good run defender, even at that size. You kind of lack that elite explosiveness off of the line. So, like, I like this. You're addressing defense with your two first picks. Both are have our high pedigree defensive players coming out of Georgia. I think both were five stars. Him and Jalen Carter. All right. So, uh, Marcus makes a little crack about uh, the Dolphins. Not having a first round pick. And as a Dolphins fan, I just don't want to talk about it. <laughs> All right. But we got the Chargers here. He mentions the concerns here with Jordan Addison being here. Uh, he talks about Zay Flowers, like, kind of like hope. Like, he brings up Flowers. He brings up Hyatt. And is like, kind of maybe hope you would have better speed guys available here assuming those guys would have been sub 4-4 and they did not test that way uh so instead i think this is very interesting goes with brian branch who i absolutely love i think brian branch uh based on his testing like i was like ah, okay you know what maybe not a top 10 player but this is the cat that i'm willing to take inside the top 20 uh i love his play i love how he plays around the line of scrimmage i love how he plays the ball i love how he plays the run there's so much to love about brian branch and to get him here pair him up with Derwin james you don't know nasir adderley is a free agent so i i like this i like this a lot all right, we got 23. Oh, Baltimore Ravens, they take Zay Flowers. Uh, this one's kind of like, no kidding. The Ravens need playmakers. 
uh lamar sounds like he's probably gonna get franchise tagged sounds like they're kind of far away uh in contract talks um when is the deadline for franchise tags excuse me um okay so you can start oh why am i getting conflicting stuff here blah 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 all right march 7th so tuesday great so we'll find out i, I assume he gets tagged but you're gonna on top of after paying him maybe uh, you're gonna want to bring in more weapons for him. There's no like the receiving core there is really lackluster. You really have Rashad Bateman and Mark Andrews, and that's probably it. Got to throw a shout out to Isaiah Likely there too. But two of those guys I named are tight ends. So grabbing some speed here with Zay Flowers, a guy that could also create after the catch, I think is good. All right. Now we jump to the Minnesota Vikings, and this is actually a trade. Look, Vikings, bam. Now the Steelers, the Steelers move up. Uh, basically, the Steelers will get this pick in a fifth, while the uh, Vikings get a second and a third, which they didn't have a second initially. And now it's a high second. It's basically a first-round pick because it's pick 32. So the Vikings move back. Steelers move up, which my first thought when watching this, I was like, Oh, it's going to have to be one of these tackles from the combine or not from the senior bowl that Mike Tomlin was checking out. So I'm like, oh, this is going to be like Dewan Jones. This is going to be like Darnell Wright. I thought it was going to be one of those two guys. Even with Roger Jones still on the board, I'm like, well, Mike Tomlin, like if we're doing a bit more predictive, uh, then I feel like he's going to try to look for those two guys. However, he goes with a guy that many people forget are still even is still even in this draft in Brian Brazee because he kind of fits the Steelers. Uh, Cameron Hayward, he's he's up there in years, still producing like a freaking monster, but he's up there in years. Uh, you haven't really addressed uh, with you haven't really addressed the retirement of Stefan to it. Like you brought in to Marvin Leal, but the verdict's still kind of out on him. So Brian Brazee kind of feels like a guy you could add there and like best case scenario all three of those guys like like best case scenario the production remains with cameron hayward uh demarvin leal kind of emerges and now you have brazil and now you just have a really really good defensive line so i get it i understand it still kind of wish it would be tackle all right so the Jacksonville Jaguars. They go with Kalijah Kansi. If you're not new to the channel, you know Eddie Tamiwa Adabari is my guy. He's my Kalijah Kansi. He is. I get why people still love Kalijah Kansi. I kind of have problems with the 30 inch arms. Uh, people are bringing the Ed Oliver. Uh, comps out there. I'm going to look at his combine real quick. See what he measured out at. <sighs> okay, so like he had he had 31 inch arms, which is fine. Like the Aaron Donald comps need to be tossed. Pledge can't see. First off, that's unfair. Aaron Donald, ridiculous. Also, 33 inch arms, they're a bit different. I know that Oh, Clyde Chancey was had a better 40. Ha ha he he. But it's like he's got the, he's got T-Rex arms. So like maybe oh, even like Ed Oliver. He, yeah. Here. I want to take a look here at mock draftable. Here. Let's look at mock draftable. Do they have Kalija? Dang it, they don't have uh, the new prospects in here yet. So I don't know. I don't know if there's going to be a exceptionally good comp for him. Uh, I'll find out as I do a bit more research. Uh, typically, I wait 
to really dish out comps till after the combine. That way, uh, well, you get measurements, you get testing times, and you can kind of look at guys who tested in a similar fashion. So, yeah, I, I mean, I get it going with him here. Yeah, that'd be fun. I still weigh with, I still like Eddie Tomiwa. That's still kind of my guy. Is what it is. Uh, Jordan Addison goes here to the uh, Giants. Giants need receivers. Addison kind of falls here, but like he's kind of always like he he. There are times where he does land here for me in mock drafts, but especially now with like his pro day is going to be very important. Like I'm not saying he gets pushed out of the first round, but. I don't think he's secured a first round spot at this present moment. All right. We have the Dallas Cowboys. I thought this one was interesting for the Dallas Cowboys. He goes with Josh Downs. I think Nathaniel Dell and Josh Downs, they're both very similar prospects in terms of size, how they tested. And if you're going to be sub, what, five, ten? Because I think five, nine is what downs came in at yeah 5 9 171 you got nathaniel dell 5 8 165 they both had four uh one four excuse me one four both had very similar 40s four four eight for downs four four nine for uh dell so like for me it's like ah that's not quite the speed i'd like for guys that are uh, that undersized who likely kind of get pitched into like slot roles or even gadget roles so it's like i'd rather take those guys on day two so like that's kind of where i'm at i know dallas at this point in the draft they're not in a great position uh to address maybe something they really need like oh maybe a quarterback too oh maybe a um uh big meaty defensive line player it's like ah uh, there's not a lot like yeah uh maybe honestly this pick might be best served just traded for jalen carter or jalen carter jalen uh ramsey then again i don't know how the cap stuff will look like will look with that so i don't know that kind of is what it is uh this buffalo pick i think a bit interesting as he takes dewan jones over Roderick jones and i think the reason it's kind of justified as Dewan Jones is kind of plug and play there at right tackle. He's played right tackle, I believe, the last two seasons. And uh, opposed to Broderick Jones, who just played left tackle for the first time this season. Uh, he did play it the year before, but has no experience on the right side. Not that necessarily that's like the end-all, be-all. But you're looking to replace that right tackle spot that Spencer Brown's just been really bad at. Uh, with like a plug and play pair. Uh, Marcus also brings up how... Uh, unpolished Roger Jones is in pass protection and I don't know like Jones I think he tests out well enough to be like man I think this guy he, he's a good enough athlete uh he's got great length great build that he, he he'll be fine I think it'll click for him sooner rather than later but I, I understand the reason to take a Dewan over uh, Broderick. But he do does go with Broderick Jones here for the Cincinnati Bengals, which I think is good. That's great. This is almost ideal for the Bengals because their offensive line, mainly their tackle positions, were PP poo poo. All right, pick 29 is. Oh, it is. Uh, it's the Bengals. Pick 30. Miles Murphy going to the Saints here. Marcus, admittedly, not a big fan of Miles Murphy. Uh, he just got into his 2021 tape and kind of gets it a bit more, uh, a bit more now. But Miles Murphy uh, didn't test out this week at the combine. Measured in cons or weighed in considerably smaller. Uh, he shedded some weight. He was down to 258. He tweaked himself stretching or. Uh, practicing for drills the day prior like he fully intended to uh, participate in drills and just tweaked I think his hammy and just didn't want to give it a good go uh, so he's going to wait till his pro day which I think is fine uh, the 
the Saints, despite what some of y'all Saints fans believe, your pass rush sucked. Sorry, I'm going to call a spade a spade. Some of y'all will be like, we were in the top five of sex this year. You were in the bottom four of pressure. It just so happens a few times you got pressure, you finished pressure with a sack. Listen, sack, sack numbers is a terrible way to, to assess your, off, your defensive line. Is our defensive line good? Let's look at our sack rate. No, look at your pressure rate. How about that? That's more indicative of how good your defensive line is. Uh, Marcus Davenport's a free agent. Cameron Jordan's coming off uh, his worst season since his rookie year. Uh, don't tell me, oh, his sack numbers were good. It's like his pressure rate was the worst since his rookie season. His pressure numbers were the worst since his rookie season. Miss me with that nonsense. His win rate was the worst since his rookie season. So calm down. Calm down. I think it's a good pick for the Saints. And I, for me, personally, with my board, I think the value is great. Let's go ahead and finish off these last two picks because I love pick 31 here. It's my boy, Adi Tamiwa. Adi Barrie. No, it's Barrie. You misspelled that, Marcus. Let, let me confirm. Yeah. Adi Barrie. Adi Tamiwa. Adibarie, or Adibari, however you want to say it. Um, I like this pick. Like the Eagles love addressing the trenches. They they have significant players along the trenches that might not be back next season. You get a very versatile piece. Uh, uh, some people are like, oh well, he mainly rushed from the edge this past year because I think he had like 400 edge snaps to 200. Uh, interior snaps you go look at senior bowl where he primarily lined up at three tech was annihilating guys this cat he tested way better than kalijah cans he came in with 34 inch arms their measurement or their uh weight and height was about the same but he blew kalijah cans out the water in terms of his testing adibari is my guy i love this pick he is the one. <laughs> Call him Neo. Uh, and then Darnell Wright going to the Chiefs. This is pretty good. You might consider tight end here. Uh, Michael Mayer had a rough uh, out in there at the uh, combine. Like, he didn't test bad by any means, but he was also 15 pounds lighter than his playing weight, which it's like, ooh. Like, if he tested out the way he did at 265, I thought it would have been fine. He came in at 250 or 249. So I was like, ah, okay. I can see why now Dalton Kincaid is starting to get this like tight end one hype. Uh, he didn't test out this week. Uh, Lucas, uh, not Lucas, uh, Luke Musgrave, I thought was solid enough. But it's really, I think it's Kincaid that's the guy we're looking to see. Can he overtake uh, Mayor? But they go Darnell right. This is great. You immediately fill this guy in at uh, right tackle. That's where he played this past season. He has played left tackle before. You don't know what's going to go on with Orlando Brown. Will he be back? I don't know, but let's see. So I like this pick. Overall, I liked this mock draft. Uh, this video is going long. Is what it is. I'm just super excited about talking about the draft. Like Especially now with the combine. I feel like there's so much now more information out there we will be starting prospect rankings up like final prospect rankings up in the next few weeks i'm gonna wait for a few pro days uh to get done so expect those like kind of around march 20th but uh that's it for the video go ahead do the youtube thing as always until next time you be easy my friends later